I, I joined my first Flylist Dev uh, virtual meetup last week, and I, I, I'm so grateful to be part of it. This is very, I, I found it to be very therapeutic, the chat afterwards <laughs> to realize we're all going through very similar things. Um, and also there's, there's strong benefits to flying less um, in, our, in our different roles. And so I'm Chris, um, based in, I moved to Austin from San Francisco about two years ago. I lead the developer advocate team at Stripe. Um, we're a pretty small team, about four of us. Um, and we focus on, I guess it's like the three A's, right? It's like driving awareness to our APIs and, and uh, developer tools, um, getting folks to adopt like our, our, our new API, like our new services. And ultimately like the pie in the sky goal for all of us is to see the community amplifying um, what the, the type of content we're putting, we're packaging up for the community. Um, I'm going to share some slides. I think most, I would love to have a pretty good conversation, um, like back and forth conversation. The, the gist of this talk is remote dev advocacy. And um, let me see if I can share my screen. Uh, okay. Please work. Can, can, can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, so Myself and uh, my colleague, Sue, Sue's Hinton, we worked on this. It's actually a blog post under Dev2. So if you go to dev.to slash Stripe, you can find this. It's an article her and I wrote on remote dev advocacy. And so the gist is often in, in at least for myself in the DevRel world, you'll go to conferences, right? So you'll see like Twilio. Twilio has an amazing video production team, right? So I, the amount of jealousy I get as a scrappy DevRel team when I see they have a video editor, they have two presenters, they have simulcast computers. Um, this is not the talk on how to be like the Twitch expert. Um, this, is, uh, this is a talk on how to practically on a budget, especially if you're an, an, an eng org that doesn't understand the value of video, like practical ways to remove the barriers of us now all being virtual and not together. Um, I look at um, another example. So there's like, there's this end, uh, separate production team, et cetera. I think personally, one of the gold, like gold standards in the industry, I think is Jason Langsdorf. Uh, he has a, 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 a video series and um, recordings called Learn With Jason. And he does a great job of himself. He has a great studio set up, but a lot of his guests, he tries to coach them so that when they do screen shares, um, the guests also have decent lighting um, you know, face on. And so I think we'll, we'll go through this. I'm going to basically be talking about gear. I'm going to be talking about some just suggestions and we can even, um, if we want at the end, do a, uh, do a, a tune up all together. I'll give you some practical tips. I'll, I'll actually be looking at some of your faces. And so, um, just personally, like in the, in this time, it's, it's, it's first of all, let's just say it's brutal. Right. So like things constantly running through my head as a dev advocate, like how the heck do I connect with developers? I am fueled by in-person. I am an ENFP. I love interacting with developers. When I write blog posts, I think, how would I say this to a developer in real life? When I uh, present a talk, I like, how do I talk naturally, not like in a stuffy tone, but just like I would talk to a fellow dev, how the heck do I, like, there's barriers when we're all on Zoom, we're all in our rooms, the meeting ends, I'm exhausted. It's a lot of like, um, when you and I, when we all talk, uh, we're looking at each other uh, and on Zoom, it's like you're constantly seeing faces and then you can get exhausted. Um, one thing I think a lot of folks, especially folks that were more of a travel heavy DevRel program, think like, how can I do my job effectively, especially with all these limitations? Um, I'm not staffed and we're not equipped. Uh, we don't have a video production studio like Firebase or Twilio or um, Netlify, or et cetera. Um, and I think I think one of the biggest things is how the heck can I advocate for developers when I'm stuck at home? How can I be the voice internally, like internal advocacy, but also convincing devs that it's, it's our, our platform is worth them uh, investing and trying out um, themselves. And so um, a couple of things that keep that I've been thinking about is like, well, there is some opportunities, right? So one thing I love about even this call is it's a great equalizer. Um, you ever been that one person on the video call and everyone else is in a room? You don't hear all the sounds. You don't hear the, the, you know, the conference from telephone. Yeah. Maybe you don't hear those chats. Like it's a great equalizer to have this Brady Bunch tile where <laughs> one, one tile, one person. And it actually, honestly, it's been helping in our team dynamic, like remote. We've always said remote is great if everyone's remote. 
remote kind of sucks if it's like one person off on the side or three people off the side and everyone else is really the deciders in the room. Um, I think it's pretty democratic, right? Like it requires me to uh, be a better listener, like take natural pauses, um, really think of an answer. Whereas in person, you can, you can end up just going from topic to topic. Um, and I personally feel that it's just an, it's a great opportunity for DevRel because I, th I think the thesis, like in our, in our, in our team, what we're thinking a lot about is we still want to do events in person events when, when, when it makes sense to start doing them again. But even when we do an, an in-person event, we want to think of ourselves as having a video first approach to what we do. So if we're going to do an event, we've got to get sign off that we're allowed to record what we do there really so that long tail devs can benefit from the content we're giving, even if it's a group of 20, 200, 2000 audience, we want to make sure all of that is on our uh, YouTube channel. Okay. So let's talk some practicals. Um, so I want to talk about, um, audio, audio gear, some like tips and tricks, everything I talk about, I'm going to be talking about, uh, like a very low end. You could probably just expense it, uh, 50 bucks or less type items. I'll talk about a medium, uh, a medium option, which is you have some sign off or you have your own autonomy, say devices under 200 bucks. And then I'll talk about like, um, um, pretty good production equipment. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of get into the folks I spoke with, um, there. And so actually let's start one, one thing I also want to make clear is like, so this isn't the talk on how to be a Twitch streamer, but what I did realize is I got a lot of advice from Twitch streamers, like folks that have their own video production studios. Um, I've also talked to videographers and podcasters who care a lot about high fidelity. And what I've realized is they have very differing opinions, right? So uh, a studio photographer, videographer, would rather have over the top expensive heavy gear that's not transportable for the highest fidelity um, and the best experience when we're talking. A Twitch streamer might care more about speed, internet, the lighting might be a little harsher than normal. And so those wants and needs, like I, I believe there's, there's an answer somewhere in the middle, which is when we talk, I want you to forget that I'm remote. I want you to think I'm either in another office, a little difficult since I'm at my mom's house. So I, I can't hide my background here. But I, I do want to like, the more we can have a conversation and forget that I'm somewhere else and you're somewhere else, but we're talking directly, um, I think it just helps for higher fidelity uh, uh, interactions um, with, with your peers and the community. All right, audio. So I think, why does audio matter? I believe that audio, microphones specifically, like we wanna have high, we wanna have a conversation that you don't want the other people on the screen to get distracted by what's that? Why does it sound like he's in a can he or she, they are in a can? Why does it sound what, like, what's that background sound of that truck going by? Like you want to remove distractions. And also remember when you don't use peripherals, like audio microphone lighting, your Mac or your window, whatever your device is, those built in integrated devices, even on a Mac are pretty crappy. They make your processor go, run hotter when Zoom, when your motherboard starts to get hot, you'll start hearing that horrid fan sound when you're on a Zoom call or something. And all of those things, um, one, affect the chance you might drop off the call, like it might just overheat. Also, it stresses you out because it's, it's, you can tell your computer is like really struggling. And so just the act of getting like, um, let's say on the lowest end, a lav mic, you're, you're offloading the, um, you're offloading some of the audio weight from the integrated microphone and you're just outsourcing it somewhere else. Um, so at the lowest end, I'd suggest getting a lav mic um, just so you can uh, be able to speak. You want it to be close to your, close to your face. Um, I also always, uh, I have headphones, again, I'm not at my normal studio, but I have headphones where you can't even see them because often when you're on a call, the, the recipient, especially if it like the angle of the screen, it can cause that re reverb, like you, you, you can cause reverb when you're chatting with other folks. And so isolating the, 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 um, the output so that only you hear it guarantees less of a risk of, of reverb. Um, I really like the blue, uh, I like the blue Yeti mic. I think that's a very reasonable, most folks can probably get that expensed. I like the blue Yeti mic, especially when it can be on a stand isolated from the table. It does have some aspects of a condenser mic, which means like, you know, you can hear, you can hear things in your background. Um, but when it's suspended, it is, and you're right up to it. Um, 
it is it's a pretty it has decent camber um it has a um uh it has a, a audio interface like built into it i think it's pretty decent um at home i have a sure smb7 mic um it's definitely what podcasters a lot of the if you ever listen to any podcasts uh, a lot of the folks if you watch um like online online video video shows most of them are using uh the sure smb7 with there's some gear i'll show you a photo of my setup but basically an audio interface so that all the audio processing is happening off your computer what i like about the sure it's called a cardioric mic right so a cardioric mic basically is you'll only hear audio if you're talking right up to the microphone. So um, as many of us have children, uh, having a microphone where you can't hear any background sounds except what I'm speaking into it is, is very valuable, especially when they're all fighting. I could be like, okay, all they can hear is what I'm saying. And so um, those, are three, those are three options. Um, lab mic, pretty basic. The, I think the Rode one's pretty decent. Uh, Blue Yeti mic, but I much prefer the stand and the Shure. Um, the Sure runs like, so pricing wise, I think the Sure runs maybe 200 and f no, uh, probably about 300 bucks. It, it's changing because of the pandemic. The B, um, with a stand, it's obviously, uh, it's more, the Blue Yeti mic is gonna range um, with stand right around the $200 mark. And a lav mic, you can get, Amazon does actually have a decent one for like 20, 30 bucks, but you can get up to about a hundred bucks for like a decent lav mic. Just make sure that thing is, not getting scratched while you're talking and it's really close to um to the source um video so i think the i guess a lot of this isn't just for dev advocacy right this is just like how to be a good coworker and have good uh, fidelity when you're talking with someone else i think you want to simulate a face-to-face -face interaction as best as possible and so like even right now when we're all talking um there's a lot of little hacks you can do that people don't think about what's the experience of the other people on the screen so um, one, like webcams, especially the one built into the Mac and the PC in, in many PCs, it compresses the range of light, right? So it, it's very easy to like get um, bleached out, have complete white out. I've actually been trying to work my lighting today. Um, I usually can control the lighting environment, but right, like I have a background light that's causing some overexposure. I'm trying to get two, two lights in the front, but the better quality the camera, obviously, the, the less it's going to look um, bleached out. Um, I really find that the built-in camera is like, um, causes the most overheating, for sure, when I'm on a long call. It's the, that, that video processor and just trying to work that. Whereas even just using a USB um, component video uh, camera, webcam, um, I, I feel like my computer runs less hot when, I, when, I'm, when I'm on long calls. So built-in webcam obviously that's your your default option it works um i'll talk about some just non-device tips there's some like practical tips when we have a call um the c920 is great there is a lot of knockoffs which are great too i think it might be back in stock obviously it, it's um this is actually the c920 so if i compare um right so if i go if i switch to this is the mac camera right here um which is fine it's decent and then um, I can switch back to, this is the Logitech. Again, my, my lighting, I'm getting insecure about my lighting, but you know, I'm just gonna deal with it. Um, the Brio is the next step up. So I think the Brio, um, I believe it's more like 200 where the Logitech is like 129. The Brio is their next step up. I think it does a better job with handling the range of light. It does have a little bit of autofocus capabilities, which is good. Um, and then, What's been suggested to me many times and I ended up getting it um, for work is the, let's say you wanna, let's say you're primarily gonna be on screen often, um, a DSLR, but specifically a mirrorless DSLR so it won't overheat. So like the Canon um, 5D Mark II, that's a very common SLR people take video with. A lot of those, those, those SLRs have um, sensors that can only record up to 30 minutes and then the camera starts to overheat and it will shut off. With the Sony Alpha series, it just never gets hot. There's no sensor. It's a mirrorless sensor, I mean. And so you can have that thing plugged in. Like I've had four hour calls. I'm never gonna risk like high fidelity and then it drops off. And so it's, it's peace of mind. And also you essentially, um, I'll talk about the components, but with the Sony, um, with the Sony Alpha series, you, it's, 
there's essentially this thing called the uh, game capture, which just makes it look like uh, when it's just in um, open mode, it, it just makes it look like another web camera to your computer. And so it off, again, offloads a lot of um, processing. Um, okay. Yeah, so these are the up close of the, C, of the C920, which I would say just everyone on your team should at least have that. Um, then there's the Brio, and then there's the, um, you know, if you wanna up level and get the a Sony Alpha. Um, the A6500, 6200, it, anywhere in the mirrorless sensor range is fine. Um, I definitely suggest getting a prime lens, like something like, um, like a 35 millimeter or 50 millimeter. A any aperture that makes it look like the resolution of an eye is gonna give you one step further in people forgetting um, that you are elsewhere. Um, I guess we're all elsewhere right now. Okay, so then just some like practical, yes, okay, you'll, you'll like this. So um, some practical tips that aren't tech related. It's just like common things you might think of, but once you know are common sense. So I think one of the best hacks I was taught that's really helpful, especially when you're having calls with developers or your colleagues is when possible, look right into the camera lens, right? And a couple reasons. Um, when I look right into the camera lens, this is how we would interact if we were hanging out. Like I'm looking right at you. I'm not looking at my screen. I will occasionally glance over, but we're looking together. I also think like uh, face fatigue is real, right? So when you're staring, uh, like often I'll do tiled screens and it's like, it's kind of exhausting. Like you're looking into a crowd that's looking at you. There is something as humans that um, it does give you fatigue. So by looking at the camera, like I want to make clear, like you have my attention. I'm, I'm trying very hard to not do the the typical, like I can hear you typing. You can hear me typing while you're saying, I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Like just try to give the person the attention. Um, let them know they matter because it's freaking hard being remote and we're all remote and it's very tempting. Like in a meeting, you can see the folks um, who are screen who aren't. Um, so I think that's that's one thing. Another one is like, please, 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 like your laptop, put it on a stand. If you only have your laptop screen, if you don't even have a webcam, get that thing elevated. So my laptop is on like a stand. No one wants the upshot, right? So when you're talking to someone and it's like, it's like, it's just the most awkward, first, it's the most awkward angle. Like imagine if you were at a bar or at a, a meetup and someone's talking and you're like looking up at their head. One, it's like, no one wants that. Two, it's like, you're just not self-aware enough to know that, uh, like, um, it, it just furthers, like, you don't know how to do, um, to do a conversation online. Now, again, I'm like a prime offender, so this is me slowly learning, but face eye contact. Now, there's a trick, right? Like, you can be at a table. I don't have a freaking stand. One, get some books or magazines. Two, you can, like, angle yourself, so you just keep your face so you're looking right at the screen um, versus, you know. You know, we don't have to get back into it. Um, okay, so the following, um, I have pixelated all their faces, uh, so I won't get in trouble. These are friends of mine, managers of mine, leaders in different companies I've been in. So what I'll often do is like, often people will be like, hey, when we're on the next call, can you just kind of school me? I'm like, I feel like my video, like my presentation looks bad. Can you give me some tips when we're on a call? And so I'll often have folks um, do that. And it's just like subtle things, right? So. Let's go, let's go through some of them and, and hopefully some of this will be useful for you. So um, this is, again, we're all home. None of, us, uh, none of us have the dream studios at home, but some practical things, right? So you don't want, um, you take a photo of someone, you don't want the background to be brighter than the, for, to the foreground. And so practical things like close your blinds, get blackout blinds, remove distract, for, especially movement distractions, remove those try to get the forefront to be brighter. Um, a very easy thing you can do is you can just go to Ikea and they have these like very diffused um, like globe lights. I have a lot of teammates that I've convinced them to just get two globe lights so you have, you're trying to remove shadows. Like right now, like right, you can see shadows. Like um, I have a light right here that's helping the shadow on the left side. But when you have a, when you have a call, most often the sides of your face are illuminated and the center is dimmer. That's the opposite of when you and I hang out in person. Typically the center of your face is illuminated. And so like just at the most basic, get a cheap light or use an existing light covered in like a white cloth and you can put it right up and behind your camera so that your face is, uh, face is illuminated. Please make sure any background windows um, are closed. Really ideally, 
like if I was really setting this up, I'd want natural lighting to, I want to be facing natural lighting always because then you can get away without having to buy like real lights. Um, so this is one example. Uh, this is another example. Um, this is like the second session uh, this person and I did, right? Whereas like the camera angle, you always want to be face level or higher looking down at you. Again, windows is, is, the, um, is, the, is, the, is the most common culprit. Um, and then yeah, some basic LED lighting uh, would be helpful. Um, they ended up like really up leveling. This is a, a manager of managers and it was like really helpful for them because their job is high fidelity the more high fidelity they have in conversations, the more effective they are in their, in their, in their job. Uh, same with all of us. Um, this, is, uh, this is an advocate um, who kind of was like, almost there, they were recording some series um, and one, the green screen, right? So like anytime you're using a green screen, you gotta make sure, a lot of folks forget this. Um, you want that green screen to be taut, ideally no wrinkles. And so you mm -hmm. can just buy on Amazon something cheap with no wrinkle. You can get a nylon material. But one really common thing when folks are trying to do it at home is look at, um, look at this developer and look at the green screen. You see that shadow in between. You can solve that very easily by just putting a desk lamp or something, even on the ground between you. You want that, that green screen backlit because the more uniform that green screen is, the more natural it's gonna look when you're replacing um, the background. And so the worst thing is when you have the outline of yourself, cause that's what causes like when you see folks with a green screen, you see those little corners staying dark. That's cause Zoom's like, first off it makes the processing a lot easier and it's like such an easy fix. Just often I'll have a lamp like on a two foot stand behind me. No one sees that lamp, but it illuminates my background. Even like um, here, if I was really set up, Illuminating the background, so you just, you want, um, so like you, if you're wearing a dark shirt, you want uh, there to be some contrast between you and your background. And so when you have a background light or a light pointing at you or at the screen, then, then you get that better um, outline of yourself. Um, please never wear patterns when possible. Dark, plain, um, simple um, textures, is ideally, when you're doing anything with um, video. Um, I think, yeah, you don't want green screen drooping. You want that, you want that camera to be eye level like we're, we're walking through some code together. Um, here they have, um, they have a micro, I really like, this is the Scarlett um, audio interface. And so what this is, is this is like USB-C from your Mac. This allows you to plug in a real like, like amp sized mic, an XLR mic right into your um, computer it offloads the majority of the processing to that device. So it's, it's called the Scarlet, um, the Scarlet digital, digital audio interface and um, the blog post has, has a link to it. And then this is another, uh, this is another like, uh, you know, eng, eng manager who has tons of reports, awesome, awesome person, but was selling themselves short by like, just, just spend five minutes and get a good setup. Right. So like, this is the horrid upshot. No one wants this angle, right? Like, I don't want to be talking to you and be like looking up at you from like your, uh, you know, lap desk area, right? I want to be looking right into your face. Um, also, this is a, it's, it, it sometimes can become a religious debate, but there's this, there's this debate in, especially in the engineering community, certainly within my company and past companies is probably the highest fidelity. You have a headset, you have a microphone right here um, and you're optimizing for the, the clearest voice possible. However, um, now that we're all online, I think uh, the camp I'm in is a headset or like large Napster cat sized headphones. It's just a distraction. It's like one more reminder that you are in your bunker or you're somewhere. Like imagine if we were at a meetup and you walk up to me and you're wearing a huge <laughs> headphones it would just be like, I'd be like, ah, cool guy. It's kind of cool person. It's kind of weird though. It's like, it's like, you gotta pay have those. Again, you do have really crisp fidelity if you have a microphone, but I'm trying to visually remove anything that distracts you from what I'm saying. And, you know, even me talking now, you're like probably looking at the stuff, you know, sub subconsciously you'll be looking at the other stuff. I'm looking at the stuff in all your backgrounds. The more that you can make that as plain as possible, makes it look like you're just in another office. Um, the more that your point's going to get through versus distraction. 
Um, this is a very common one. So someone here heard, oh, you got to get some lighting. And so someone's like, okay, sounds like I got to get some lighting. Let me get that one light on the left. And so you end up getting, it's like, it's like two issues I have with, um, with this individual is the light is coming up, right? So like, especially as, um, uh, you know, I don't think any of us are young chickens here. I don't think any of us want like our jowls highlighted, right? We, you don't want lighting coming up like from this way. The most flattering light is when it's um, two or three. So if you only have one light, uh, make sure it's not harsh. So like, that light is very harsh. And so often lamps, the top part's really harsh and the bottoms, sometimes I'll just throw a white cloth. If I don't have anything else, I'll throw a white cloth over a lamp. But if you only have one, put it centered right above your web camera, webcam behind. So at least your face is illuminated. Second best option is have two diffuse lights so that the lighting is coming from two angles. You're trying to remove like the raccoon eyes. You're trying to remove um, center shadows on your face, um, especially like harsh lighting from straight above. If, if you have like a, a, a um, larger kind of forehead it will actually cause that shadowing, right? Which is, which is not great. The ideal situation is three point lighting, right? Which is you have, a, you have a key light, you have a key light that's giving you lighting, you have another accent light, and then you have a light behind that's highlighting, like, like I mentioned, behind you so that you have some contrasts. Um, you can do all this without buying expensive gear. There's a practical way to do it. And then if it ends up being worth your time, then you can talk to yourself. I mean, whoever's the decision maker and between a um, couple hundred bucks all the way up to 2000 bucks, you can get yourself a real um, like studio level setup. Um, so this is my colleague, Suze. Um, her and I took photos of our own setups and just like for the, the blog post, which I've, I've turned into a, um, this mini deck. And so Sue's got the Brio webcam, right? It's right, it's eye level with her. Um, she got the Rode mic and she, um, she's done a good job. Like when you're on call, she's figured out sometimes with these, these suspended mics, like the issue is if people aren't intentional about it, they like forget that there's like something floating like right there. And so you do have to kind of look at yourself in photo booth and try to make sure it's, I, the best situation was a mic is off camera or it, the, also when you have a black t-shirt on, a lot of mics, you can angle it so that it just hides with the shirt and no one's you know, often like, you, you, no one wants to be talking with a mic between me and you, right? You want it to be useful, but get out of the way. So that's her setup. Um, and then this is my setup at home. Clearly I am not in the best setup right now. I guess I'll just keep saying it to make myself feel better. But this is the setup I wish I had for this call which is, um, so I have the, um, I have the Sony uh, Alpha, the, the Sony DSLR, um, slightly eye level, right? So you and I meet, head to head is fine, but when the person thinks they're looking slightly down at you, it actually, um, like there's studies that show it, it, it's a little disarming because they feel tall, like larger than you. So slightly above eye level, looking down at you ideally. Then I didn't, um, I wish I splurged on, there's the, uh, the key, Elgato has this thing called the key light airs, which I wish I got. I just got um, cheaper LED lighting at Amazon. I do have like diffused ones, but it, it takes over half my room. So typically I just have these two LED lights. Um, the Elgato key light air, which I would strongly recommend. What I love about them is the desk, the clamps go on your desk straight up. Whereas my two clamps, my two stands, they have the tripod and it just takes up a lot of, I'm trying to minimize the amount of floor space the gear's taking up. So the key light air is like, they go, there's a straight pole with a clamp to your desk, pretty minimal. Um, the camera note that I've put it on, not a tripod, but it's actually a monopod. If you look, it's kind of like that red stand behind the monitor. It's a very um, small form factor so that it's the, the tripod for the camera isn't taking up too much space. Um, one thing folks forget is a really good setup is you actually want a desk or a surface behind your desk taking a photo of you. So a lot of folks don't really like, if it's right at your camera level, you're not having enough distance, especially if you want the background blurred. Um, I have the Rode mic, which is, um, I have it again, angled, angled ideal, right? So it's, it's kind of, you can get the audio in, but it is not directly facing, facing you. 
Um, and then down at the bottom, the Elgato cam link is really important. That takes the camera connection and converts it, uh, converts like HDMI essentially into a webcam format. So it's less processing for your computer. And then on the left, I have the Scarlett USB-C audio interface I mentioned, which takes the microphone, which is like a true, you know, XLR, which is like that, you know, if you ever at a concert and they have those big microphone, the big connectors, you plug that into the audio interface and then out is a USB-C to your computer. And so to your computer, it's just like plugging in a headphone. Um, it actually controls all the volume on your computer. Um, so that's the setup as me looking at it. And then the, the opposite angle. Oh, notice I have the, um, the day in, in, the, in the mornings and in the afternoons, the daylight's great. So half the time I don't need to use the lighting. Uh, it's more like in the evenings when I wanna control lighting. Um, pretend I'm sitting there. This is the opposite, right? So I, you can buy, there's many options. There's plastic options, there's cloth options, but I highly suggest a cloth, like a photographer's background. So this is like wood paneling background. It, if you look really close to it, it's actually semi pixelated, which is great because it actually adds an additional depth of field. And again, like there's different con there's different colors. There's um, you can do, I also have a green screen option also when I'm trying to, when I need to just be the outline of me when I'm doing a code walkthrough, but the cloth background, you're just trying to control your background and make people forget. Um, they, they don't need to know where you are. And sometimes when I'm traveling, I'll bring this setup and I'll set somewhere else. Um, and no one thinks twice about where's Chris. Um, so I, yeah, I really like that background. And then I did, Right now that's two point lighting, right? But I actually do have another can, I have another light that I put, you actually can kind of see it behind that desk. There is a light that's pointing up and that's, sometimes you call that a hair light where you're trying to get the very, if you ever look at a movie in, the, in a dark scene, the very edges of someone's hair and shoulders has a thin uh, lighting like trim. And that's to just give you some contrast between the foreground and the background. Um, all right. so. Yeah, we can kind of move into Q and A or just like chat, but like recap list of gear, right? So I'd suggest in the minimum getting a lavalier. If you really don't have any options, you can use like a Mac headphone. Um, I do think the white headphone wire is distracting. Very specifically, I, I do not recommend doing something wireless. You're gonna be tempted to use your AirPods or some type of wireless option, but almost always you will run into some audio, even if it's a millisecond audio delay, or if the battery's half dead, you're gonna be so upset at yourself to just get something wired so you know it's gonna work nonstop when you're on a call. Um, a Blue Yeti mic, if you can, if you can um, upload it, uh, up level. Um, and the Shure SMB, which I mentioned. Webcam, I, honestly, I think the C920, which I'm using right now is great. The Brio is a step up. Um, if you can spring for it, get a, get a, get a mirrorless SLR. Uh, lighting, any type of LED, just clip, clip light, um, or if you can up level, get the Elgato key light air. And then for background, green screens are fine, but I do think it's just some natural, neutral wooden look is great. Um, last thing I'll say on that is um, when I took the job at Stripe, it was, um, it was before the company announced that they were very supportive of remote. And so one thing I was very conscious of is most of the team was in San Francisco. This is before the Seattle office got big. And so I ended up just like the, my background before I got this backdrop, my background looked exactly like how a lot of the interiors of the offices at Stripe looked. And so what was really fun, let's say we go back to um, offices again, and some of us are all going to, some of us might be remote still. It was, it was always great when people just assumed I was in the other office. So the Seattle folks thought I was in SF, SF thought I was in Seattle. And like the, the goal there is, muted background, there's plants, there's, it, it looks like you're in another Stripe office. And what I like about that is that's what you want is you don't want someone to think, um, oh, my lighting fell off. Um, you can definitely get the impressive Twitch setup, but it just, it, it's almost like um, there's nothing wrong. I think that's great to do it, especially if you can afford it. But that's like, look, I have this hardcore gamer setup and it just is like a thing they don't have. And it's like, um, that becomes a, a talking point, which is like a distraction from the point I want to get across. And then also you got to think like your goal is that no one thinks twice about where you are. They just assume you're in another place, not there, but it's another office and you're not like 
at home, like you've really been intentional about your setup. So um, yeah, think about those things. And um, that's, that's what I had for, for prepared stuff. So um, I hope any of that was useful. That was awesome. Nice job. Good stuff. Can I ask, can I ask you a, a question? Yeah, yeah. Um, so like, so we're talking about like the video experience where you, you want something high fidelity. Yep. It's the audio thing where you want high fidelity. But if we're gonna, if we're gonna like, I mean, one of the things I'm always really interested in is like defaulting to mute. Because, and the reason I ask is, is the question about whether you can just get a little bit of feedback, like nobody's gonna start talking over you. Well, hopefully not. But I'm, I'm sort of, I think there can be some, when everyone goes on mute, I think it's slightly harder to have a conversation um, amongst a group of people. Do you have any opinions about that? Yeah, so I definitely have memorized like the Zoom uh, shortcut for mute, right? Like, because I do think, yeah, it's, it's a good point. Like sometimes muting on and off, especially when everyone's mute is almost the equivalent of raising your hand. I think for myself, and I actually haven't asked my own team, what I do is I'm always, um, I'm always in tile mode. Like even now, I'm looking at all of you, right? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at, because when I'm in a real life meeting, I guess I'm going to sound like cunning or something, but um, I am wanting to read the room to see like uh, whether it's me presenting or someone else, like I want to address all concerns. I want to make sure we actually think this is a good plan. And it's, it's, it's a lot harder when zoom's just doing the switching the speaker mode. Um, I have found when the present, when the person running the agenda or running the thing encourages everyone to use the uh, raise hand or emoji, Thing I do find that is helpful, but you need someone to um, be intentional there, I think. This partly to do with humor. Like I sort of, as a speaker, I kind of like, hopefully somebody might chuckle and it's nice. I like to hear that. Um, and it, you know, so like I just saw Eddie, he, you know, I, I got, I got my, I got my uh, feedback, but it wasn't, you know, he, you know, it's like, go off mute to laugh and then go back. It just, it's, so there's something about that. I mean, I, basically, Chris, I think what I'm asking is, is that I, as a presenter, you know, have, have always thrived on being in the room. And so, um, you know, getting that feedback loop and you can do some of it visually for sure, but I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to work out the sort of, it turns out that, that, you know, for the same reason that audio is so important, you know, I feel like I'm missing something. No, so I, th I think it's a great point because when we're, um, like right now, I can read the room and especially if we all go off mute, there is like, no one here I don't think has a bad connection. Sure, some people chose to turn off their screen and that's the equivalent of like us all chatting in a room and then some folks are having another conversation. But when like we're all, when I can see all your faces and we're all off mute, it's fine. It's like those three people that are calling in from a phone, like when the fidelity quality is mixed, yeah. that's when I, it would be the equivalent if, if you're speaking and someone's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like they're on their phone in the back of the room. Even if they're asking you a question, it's like blurred and loud. That's where it's like, if you don't have that fidelity match parody, mm -hmm. then that's where I find the struggle totally. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, 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 that makes sense. Um, I think, you know, we're all trying to work this stuff out to your point about being in the room or not in the room, you know, like sort of company happy hours. And if there's only two people on video, they end up talking to each other and forgetting about, forgetting about the people that are not on video, but then you can't insist that people are on video because if they don't want to be on video, that's completely cool. So I think to I, that I don't point know, too, the audio I know, one I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with. So I think to this point too, like you and I talking is a great example. I think what can happen in a room like this is that if the if the folks moderating um, aren't being intentional about bringing other voices, like we're just going to dominate this conversation, and it does require the moderators to like. That's I think the hardest point in a in a five person plus Zoom room is how the heck you get the conversation going and not do the classic thing that's so easy for us to do. Well, that's exactly right. Then has anyone got any questions or any comments <laughs> they'd like to make? Hey, what's one thing I'll, I'll jump in. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh, everybody's raising their hands. I'm sorry. I no, is, is that I wanted to make a point here, which I think is super interesting, is that um, when you get the good camera set up, 
you accept the video lag of processing the good camera setup along with that. And if you sync that up with your audio, then you're always a little bit behind and you have to start intentionally jumping in really fast if you want to get a point in because you're 300 milliseconds behind and it feels weird if you don't change the way you interact. Wesley Did you just and... prove that? I think you, that was like <laughs> Donnie showing rather than telling. That was amazing. Uh, Wesley, what, what was your, what was your question? Uh, I had more of a tip than a question. Yeah. Um, that Chris, you mentioned about like how the being at the same eye level is important. And so the tip that I have is that if you want to like have the faux vision of like looking at the person, um, what you should do is in your video chat program, shrink it as small as possible and then raise it to the top center of your screen. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so what you do is when you're looking at the person, you, your, your eye line is as close to the camera line as possible. So uh, people tend to focus in on the person they're talking to, especially in the Brady Bunch, you might look down here or down here or up here or up here or off to the side. But if you shrink it and then move it up to the center, then it, you, when you talk to the person, it can seem as though your, your eye line is like looking right at the camera. That, that's a good tip. Which to something like Teams that won't let you do it. And it's really frustrating having the video all the way across the bottom of the screen, mm -hmm. the camera up at the top, and you're constantly looking down. It looks like you're ignoring people. It's really frustrating. Oh, is that, is that Teams? I haven't had to use that much. So. Yeah, Teams does that. <clears throat> Okay. I've noticed some. Um, I've noticed some folks when you have a dual screen. I've noticed some folks have taken their webcam and like put it in. Oh, sorry, it's super light. Um, put it in between the two cameras and then they look at that at the camera because often, yeah, like when you have a monster screen, it's like, yeah, it's like trying to get that. It's it's hard, right? You want almost want that camera right where the freaking screen is. I like the, uh, the idea about everyone being off mute, but I think some people get feedback in the system. I was going to suggest, can we just all try it and, and see how it goes? Uh, I'd be interested to know if we get any kind of, you know, audio echo feedback and, and how, it, how it works. I think that's a really good idea. And Lorna said uh, over four people, I think she mutes herself. And I do that without even realizing. Only when I read Lorna write that, I thought, oh yeah, I do the same. But I never realized that I did it. Yeah, um, if we called one another... Well, like if I was just talking to Eddie, we do. I wouldn't yeah. mute in between my remarks, um, unless it was like mad background noise or sneezing or something. Um, but if you're on a call with people who don't have a good audio setup, and yeah, there's somebody who isn't using a headset or whatever, then just insisting that everyone mutes all the time is the simplest way for everybody to be able to communicate. Mm. Um, this is fine for me, by the way, with you all unmuted. Yeah, I have no echo. I think it's actually pretty good. Uh, Ryan, this lot are all pros. It's true, <laughs> Ryan. It's what's true. your uh, Ryan? I'm curious your your setup over there. What's what, what do you <laughs> gear you're rocking over there? Ryan's light is amazing. I know, seriously. So I was in the car when I joined this. Don't don't tell anybody. Which is why I had to <laughs> you're in the mind, car. Right I really now. wanted to see this. <laughs> um, so I'm less of a dev advocate than I am a photographer. I think I'm only six months into this job. So, uh, but prior to this, I you know would shoot fashion outside of work. So I've got two like studio lights. And the reason I mute is because they've got fans, like photo lights always have fans. It's, it's just a thing because you don't care about sound. Video lights don't have fans. Uh, so I tend to mute because I, I get self-conscious about it. So I ended up grabbing a dynamic mic, which I think mm. the sure you recommended is as well. That's what Eddie um, has, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in Canada. Those are like at least $1,100 here. So a little bit more expensive. Wow. <laughs> just the I mic. don't know what it is. It's like some, as soon as they cross the border, they shoot up in place. <laughs> Not always like that. Oh, but, um, syrup, yeah. So for the camera, like when COVID started, you couldn't get a webcam. So I just used my D800, which happened to have like a HDMI out. I was mm -hmm. lucky. Uh, I did definitely haven't shot video prior to COVID. So I've learned a lot and didn't know anything about audio either. So it's been, uh, it's been interesting. Taylor, you have a uh, fellow Austin that you have felt you have good natural lighting. Uh, from that side and then I have a ring light right like a cheap ring light on a stand right here that's cool because I couldn't find like a nice key light the last few months and so I just kind of gave up but I mean because it would the problem was like this side of my face was shadow mm -hmm. because all the natural light mm -hmm. and so 
my cheap solution was buy cheap ring light. I mean, but it and looks then, like you're in an office. Like I like it, that. Your yeah, background. it looks amazing. It's not just yeah, I have my plants. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And art. Um, I'm actually looking at my video right now in OBS in a circle, so like I actually can't see the things over there because <laughs> I'm messing with some OBS stuff. But the nice thing about the ring light is it actually like has different modes depending on like time of day. So oh. like, kind of switch it up and it like. What's the brand? Is it just like from Amazon or you got to? Yeah, it's like... super cheap from Amazon. The, my own requirement was that it had a uh, like a stand because I didn't want to have to attach it to my desk. How big is the, are we talking a foot, a half foot? Like. Here, let me, I can just move it. Yeah, the changing the color temperature, I think is pretty, mm -hmm. it's a really good feature, especially if you're balancing. I mean, it's pretty tall. Oh, okay. Like nice. it, and it has like a proper tripod bottom, but for a cheap one, I'm like pretty impressed that it That's worked nice, out. Yeah. yeah, to your point, Ryan, it's sort of a lot depends on like, so I'm super white, like, like <laughs> I just really white out. Um, yeah, we, we may have some uh, similarities there. Um, and it, it, yeah, it can be. It's hard to light yourself. The lights, white, white lights on me and I just, it's, I don't know. I, it, yeah, it's, it, you know, that, that's a hard one. Yeah, these so are random walls wall. and people are wondering what the red hair is floating in space. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. It's just, so I'm actually trying, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a thing with, uh, with, with Cloudflare that's coming out next week. And I tested my setups um, uh, earlier on. I'm going to do it downstairs. I'm really worried, actually, that the light is going to hit the wall like it's beginning to happen mm. here. Um, which may wash me out. But I'm actually going to not use this setup because I, I just feel like I wanted more depth of field. Mm -hmm. So I'm, or at least more, a more interesting background or I don't want to, I didn't want to go green screen. So I'm doing it downstairs in the kitchen. Mm. And, and I'm going to actually just use my, my Pixel 3. The, the, the color matching seemed better. The, the, the 920 is a good like workhorse but I'm going to try and do it just with the camera and the zoom. I mean the phone and, and do, do the zoom call from the phone. Um, so we'll see how that works out. I don't know if anyone, cause the phone cameras are just so insanely good. They are, they are really let you use that as a webcam. Well, no, because zoom runs on the cam. So you can right, but you can you, you can use your phone camera as a webcam for oh, your Oh yeah, computer. no, you you can. I mean, this was partly just because I got into like downstairs on a massive table. I've got you know the I can put the camera nicely on the the phone nicely on a tripod. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I tried doing that with the using the phone, but my setup just I ended up having it over here, and that wasn't great. Um, so are you going just Bluetooth audio then? Um, no, oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the audio from my, um, uh, from my snowball from, so I'll, I'll basically log in twice mm. and to only have the video on one so that I'm doing the audio, uh, with one, but also it's just a whole, I have, I've, I've like, I'm literally going to sort of be holding, um, soundproofing around me because it's kind of bouncy downstairs. Um, like the cooking with James show, you're like in your kitchen, just like. The cloud play cooking stuff. So here's another thing I've just noticed, and I don't know if anyone else has had this with some of the talks they're doing, but you know, um, from the spirit of, you know, we want to encourage more diverse voices and not just default to give everybody the good shit. And like, I think Wesley talked about this a couple of weeks ago. A lot of the, the, the vendors now that are my clients, if they're getting me to do a talk at their event, they, they, they're like sending me equipment. Um, and, and, and it's starting to feel a bit, it's not quite weird yet, but it's, it could get weird. And one of the things I'm worried about is that like the presenters that everyone knows are going to end up with like amazing setups. And then everyone's going to be like, oh, we should work with that person because they've got an amazing setup. And I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit, so like what, one of the companies, I was like, are you, especially when they were talking about like sending out an iPhone 11 and I was like, uh, I, you know, this is kind of weird. And then they're like, oh no, we, you have to send it back. I was like, oh, okay, that, that's all right then. But is that, as, I mean, I, I worry that, that that's a thing that could reinforce privilege. Are they so doing I'm, it for I'm, consistent? Like, I know one, one issue is if you have 30 videos and one of them is janky, 
they probably want to control. I know a lot of videographers want to completely. Oh, no, absolutely. No doubt. I understand the desire okay, okay. to do that. Um, I see. Like, so one thing, Eddie, maybe you've got that spare mic. Maybe we can find someone that needs it more than we do. Um, and maybe that's, uh, if other people are finding this, if it becomes a thing, we should be passing on this equipment to other folks in the community because there's so many great voices and it, it would be a shame to see them have less good equipment when, um, so it's just a thing I've sort of noticed. I, think I, I love that. Lorna, of, Lorna uh, what were you gonna say? I think it's the new equivalent of the travel budget. Right. So people will invite me knowing that they can't get a European speaker, but I come with a travel budget so they can invite me as a, like a European voice um, because my employers pay for it. But um, does that make me the best voice or just the person with the travel budget? And now the same. I have the equipment budget. You know, I have a, a nice home an office with a door. It doesn't make my content any more valuable, but it makes me easier to ask. Um, that's right. And then another thing I was hearing that I hadn't fully, like I know, so bandwidth in, in, in Nigeria is, is, is more expensive. And I'm all like, oh yeah, good, we can have more Nigerian voices in, involved. But then they're like, I can't do that. It's gonna cost me sort of an arm and a leg. So these are some of the, yeah, to, I, think, I think Wesley's points, as I say, a couple of weeks ago were really on point that you've gotta be sort of intentional and so, um, especially on this equipment thing, when, when people are just like, oh, we're going to send a thing. And then it's like, now I've got some great new lighting. And, you know, when frankly, I would buy it all myself anyway. It's just a bit self-perpetuating something. Do you, to you think to an extent, James, that's a little unique to like your role in the industry? Because I definitely know I have folks sending me gear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, mean, I was gonna say a lot of people haven't like I've seen conferences want to do that but they haven't actually been able to because the access to like the webcams is just not there mm. like there's a lot have like I mean I spoke my first online one was back mid-April and they wanted to send me things but they never actually could mm. um, so like they wanted to send because the I was having trouble getting a, like a better webcam at that point mm -hmm. And they never were able to track one down to send me. But I, um, I ended up actually using a GoPro with a cam link, mm. which is like, it has its quirks about it. It's also, I think, making the cam link run really hot. Mm -hmm. um, although I'm not entirely sure if that's my USB hub that the cam link is plugged into. I'm like still experimenting with that. The, the but cam it never link's so off. hot. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah, like it's, um, and I, I'm still trying to figure out if I can like actually like get the when i'm streaming like on a zoom if i can get the like lighting to be a little bit better with it um like the colors look a little off that normally you would have access to if you're using it as a gopro but when it's in that like setting you don't have access to anymore but um that's been like an interesting one because we just had a gopro laying around the house mm -hmm. I would have a one question regarding um, coming back to demos and you know showing code and this kind of stuff. Do you have mm. any recommendations on that? Um, an example, pre-record maybe stuff or and how to uh, actually play that stuff while being on a conference. Yeah, yeah, I could I, I could jump in there. So um, we started when we um, I've gotten away with a lot by like starting pilots and then three months later deciding was that a good pilot or should we pivot and so. We started when we were doing um, our channel. Our channel is uh, Stripe Developers. And so when we started, I was actually doing live streams um, with different offices, because I was in Austin, where we I would route the Zoom call actually to a YouTube live stream. We'd answer the questions live. And so like, I'm showing you how to code, but I'm also was like managing the YouTube live stream. Um, it was crazy stressful, because we don't have like an extra video team. There is no like, we have to roll it our own we use ScreenFlow to edit our videos. Like it is very much like roll up your sleeves. We did end up switching to, um, actually this is a good point for the Nigeria developer point. Like we pre-record and then we use YouTube Premiere to answer questions in chat live. Mm -hmm. And so that's been incredible for us. It's actually reduced a lot of the burden. And so you'll know like, oh, next Friday we'll be live. And we'll say in the video, like our, our staff of engineers are answering questions the whole time, we'll be in there ask us anything, but it is like a pre-recorded video that has reduced the amount of anxiety I've had. And also because of all the time zones, we're all around the world. 
when we do all hands and one of us wants to demo internally, um, like something we're working on, we just pre-record it on like on, on a crisp iPhone or Android. And um, it feels like I'm streaming, but it is just pre-record. That's been really helpful. Um, you can look at our videos. We kind of have a run book for um, the exact editor, like the, the color profiles of the editor, how we set up um, screen flow for oh, each one of cool. us. Um, and um, our heads and tails, uh, the audio, the, the, the audio we can use. So we have a lot of like internal templates, but it's really just for us. It's, we keep it basic with screen flow. Um, you know, like when you're getting a passport photo, you want to make sure we're all like, like I'm this size and like the person next to me is like, you know, one fourth of their screen, you know, that, that's the type of stuff we're trying to consistency over. Um, Good, good argument also for, I, I don't like it when dev advocate teams, like one rock rock star on the team has the, the baller set up and then the so, other advocates look worse. And it's like, I said, no, we all have to have basically the same gear. So here's the thing. Katie just made me the host. Um, I've got to get set up for this speaking thing. And I'm really worried about the sunlight downstairs. This is going to be, this could be <laughs> disastrous. Um, but I just wanted to say thanks so much, Chris. And I, I sort of, I'm going to do a bad one as well, because we've got to, I, you're going to be speaking again. There's, we, there, we, we need to hear more from you, I think. <laughs> that, was, that was fantastic, but I want to know a bit more about the, the Stripe side too. But honestly, that was an amazing talk. Um, thanks for joining us. Hopefully see you again, uh, you know, next week and, and you know, see everyone uh, next week. Uh, have a great week, everyone. And, and thanks for coming. And and yeah, just just keep on keeping on. You guys rock. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Thanks, Chris.